Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, certainly, we do thank and praise the Lord once again for another opportunity to stand here before you and to declare the word of the Lord. For the scripture says that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's certainly a great day outside. The sun is shining, and the birds are singing. Amen. And um, on yesterday, as I was uh, going in and out of the house um, and, and going hither and thither, uh, I was looking at the trees, I was looking at the birds and all things that were going on. And it just lets me to know the Lord spoke to my heart and said, see, I'm still faithful. We're still going to have seed time and harvest, and we're still going to have uh, uh, summer and, and spring and winter. The seasons still go on. It shows us that God is faithful. And we thank God for the faithfulness of the Lord. The scripture says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And as people are signing on, we do thank God for uh, your praises unto the Lord. And we want to praise the Lord to each and every one of you. Amen. Because I often tell the congregation, and I believe this with a whole heart, that I need you and you need me. when We need each other. We need each other. And so as we get ready to go before the Lord uh, in another dynamic lesson, it's a great lesson on today. And all of God's word is rich, and all of God's word has great power and authority in it. Uh, this particular lesson, it speaks about our Christ. It speaks about our Savior, the righteous branch. And as we get ready to go before the Lord, uh, let us just remember, men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord himself will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to be uh, connected, connected to a mighty Savior, a mighty Deliverer. And it's a great thing to be connected to the body of Christ. We should all want to come together. We should all want to worship uh, the Lord uh, together in spirit and in truth. And I can't wait till we open back up fully and all come together with song and dance. We'll do the social distancing. We'll wear our mask. We'll do the things that are necessary. We'll sterilize our hands. Uh, but it's just good to come together and worship the Lord. For wherever your focus is, uh, there's a manifestation of presence. If your focus is on the Lord, he'll manifest his presence. If your focus is on the enemy, the devil, and your plight, your troubles, uh, then that will manifest. So that's why it's good to, he said, I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Train your mind to stay on the Lord. Train your mind to think according to the scriptures. Amen. So you can walk around in the environment and in the peace of the will of God. You know, in this, and I'm going to get ready to pray but I just feel the anointing. I feel the spirit of God just moving in this atmosphere. And it's, and it's good for us. We uh, live in a natural body. We live in a natural world. Uh, but we are spiritual beings. And uh, we have to realize that um, in the spirit is we're sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And we have to let that be more of a manifestation of our heart. That, that we have power, that we have authority in this earth to, that, to manifest the kingdom of God. And that has to be our manifestation of our thoughts and our hearts. And, and, and the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that shall be added unto you. The scripture says, set your affections on things above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And that's what we want to do uh, in our walk with the Lord. We want to set our affections on him. We want to set our love on him. And as we get ready to come boldly, as the scripture says, to the throne of grace, so that we can obtain that mercy that we need and that grace to help us in our time of need. Um, let us remember to pray for men and women and children everywhere 
that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Let us pray. Let us pray for our frontline workers, uh, not only uh, the medical staff, but those that are in the, uh, the service business and those that uh, also provide protection and those that are first responders. Let us pray. Let us pray for safety for all men and all women and everywhere. And let us pray for our leaders that they'll find a, a, a the Lord will reveal to them uh, what is the solution to this uh, great pandemic and um, so that uh, they will be able to vaccinate uh, those that need vaccines and, and things such as that, testing. And um, let us pray that all things work together. Let's pray that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you. We praise you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for the strength and power that you have given to each and every one of us to walk in your way, to uplift the kingdom, to magnify your holy and precious name. And now, Lord, we pray, Lord, for all those that are tuning in on today. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth an anointing, send forth your word of grace and strength and comfort. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And once again, I want to welcome you to another broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church here in Erie, Pennsylvania, 501 West 31st Street. And uh, we certainly love to hear from you. Um, if you want to drop us a note, drop us a line, uh, drop us a card, we'll certainly read it and we'll get back to you. Uh, it's Erie PA 16508 501 West 31st Street. And I am the lead pastor, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Frankie L. Quinn, and we thank God for our leadership here. Um, we are affiliated with the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith Church, and um, we are an affiliate of the NIPAIN States Council that stands for New York, New England, Pennsylvania States Council, where our diocesan bishop is Bishop Clarence Turner. We thank God for him in Christ Temple. Amen. That's, I've learned uh, that that's the, the cathedral <laughs> because that's where the diocesan uh, uh, resides. Thank you, Lord, the cathedral of our council. So we certainly do thank God uh, for all of our pastors of the Night Pain States Council. We thank God for each and every one of you that are tuning in with us uh, to uplift the name of Jesus. Amen. There's no big eyes. There's no little U's. We're all uh, little friends of Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So as we get ready to go into our lesson on today, uh, it's coming out of the Union Gospel Press, uh, lesson uh, number 10 uh, for this uh, May 3rd. It's May already. April showers are bringing May flowers. Amen. And we want, I want to also congratulate those that would be graduating this month and next month uh, from, from various stages of education. And I want to congratulate you. I'm a big proponent of education, and um, I'm a big proponent of those achieving and going to the next level. And don't let this setback that you can't walk uh, across the stage set you back. Uh, just trust in the Lord and, and know that God is with you and that your accomplishments have not gone uh, unforeseen. They're not forgotten. So utilize this time uh, as you move into the next level, whatever that phase is for you, uh, trusting in the Lord. And I, and I salute you and congratulate you on your great achievements. Our lesson uh, this morning uh, comes from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 23. And we are to read chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. And our subject this morning is talking about the righteous branch. It's talking about the righteous branch. And a branch is a symbol used in the scriptures uh, to uh, 
uh, symbolize royalty, the ancestry of royalty, and it symbolizes prosperity. And it also has the most significance as it relates to the lineage of the Messiah, who is Jesus Christ. And in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah mentions a righteous branch or a branch uh, 15 times. The prophets mention it about five times. And then as in, they are also mentioned throughout the Gospels. All four Gospels talk about a righteous branch, which refers to uh, Jesus Christ. And um, the most familiar, one of the most familiar um, scriptures in the, uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 11, uh, verse number 1, it talks about a branch shall come from the stem of Jesse. And that's uh, referring to Jesus, Jesus Christ, the manifestation of the Messiah. And as we uh, look uh, forward in our lesson, it uh, comes, uh, once again, I sing out of the book of Jeremiah. And it's, it's a beautiful lesson that focuses in on uh, leaders, uh, pastors, and it talks about God uh, establishing the, the, the return of his people uh, through the righteous branch, through the Messiah. So we want to delve right into our lesson here on today. It says um, Jeremiah chapter 23, and Jeremiah is a book that uh, was written um, uh, to encourage the people as, as they get ready to go into captivity. The children of Israel, um, um, they have a varied history. They have a history of prosperity, but also they have a history of naughtiness, uh, rebellion. And at this particular time, um, they were in rebellion to God. It's a bad thing to be in rebellion to God because then God has to do various things to chastise his people or instruct his people to turn their hearts back to him. Um, it's, it's not God's will that anybody should perish, but God does not allow sin to go unchecked. Um, if, if that were the case, people would sin freely without uh, the fear of retribution. The scripture says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And um, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And whatever God's word has said, uh, it shall come to pass. And the reason why I'm saying all of this is, is because uh, not only will God chasten his people, but God chastens his people out of love and mercy to get them to turn their hearts back to him. Notice what the scripture says, if my people that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves, if they would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and then turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. And God wants us to humble ourselves and to seek him. So in this process here, uh, uh, the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdoms, I don't want to uh, go into all of that, but uh, the, the southern kingdom uh, went down into Babylon and they were there for 70 years. And before they went down into their captivity, the Lord sent them a word. And that's encouraging because uh, no matter what state, no matter what condition you may be in, uh, there is a word for the Lord for you to help you in your time of need. Uh, doesn't matter uh, what you have done, doesn't matter how far you have strayed away from the Lord. Uh, the, if you go to the Bible, if you search out the scriptures, God has a word for you. Uh, in the midst of your captivity that is able to free you. I thank God that, that, that he has given each of us a measure of faith. And that measure of faith is given whether or not you're regenerated, born again, or you're not, or a sinner. Because a sinner needs faith in order to get saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and God, uh, God's word 
uh, his, his faith activates the word of God to bring us out of our captivity. That's why the scripture says, uh, it talks about in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter number 11, talks about now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then it says, uh, uh, if, if uh, God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Uh, so he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You got to believe that God is. My God, believe that God exists. Believe that God has all power. Believe that God has all authority. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So as we uh, get ready to go into our lesson, uh, as we said in the book of Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, that, that the word of the Lord came to them before they were going into their captivity. And God gave them a word and he prophesied about what he was going to do. <clears throat> so we see here, uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse number one, it says, woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. So this reference here is, is to pastors, but it's also to all types of leaders. It's just not relegated to pastors, but it's relegated to all leaders, both spiritual and civil, that are held to a higher standard in, in, in service to the people of God. When I say the people of God, I mean people in general. Uh, leaders are held at a high standard. Uh, the Gospels bring that out. Jesus brought that out. Uh, also, the books of the letters, uh, Paul's, Paul's epistle, uh, epistles, and, and Peter's epistles, and James' epistles, they bring that out, that leaders um, are held to a higher standard, and rightly so, because they represent God. Leaders have to watch out and be careful about what they teach and what they preach. I was um, listening to uh, one of our, my senior bishops and they were saying that, you know, even in this time that we're over uh, on the airways and we're on Facebook and more people are tuning in and catching up with us, we have to be careful, leaders and preachers and teachers and those who um, uh, name the name of Jesus have to be careful of the doctrine. Make sure that you're not being a heretic. Make sure that you're not putting out things that are false, that are untrue, because some people are going to believe it. And uh, the Bible says that it says that if the blind lead the blind, they're all going to fall into the ditch. And um, Jesus, the Lord, will hold us at a higher standard, at a higher level when it comes down to leading people astray. So we have to be careful and we have to watch out. So notice what he says. He says, whoa. Then anytime you see woe in the scriptures, that means whoa, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. If you mess up, you're going to get it. Thank you, Lord. So the scripture says, woe, woe unto the pastors. And that word pastors there, it means not only um, uh, spiritual leaders, but it means also civil leaders that, that, that scatter, notice, the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. And notice what he's saying. He's talking about um, um, uh, his sheep, the, 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 the Lord's sheep of his pasture. And it represents that the Lord has a strong relationship, a strong relationship with his people. God cares. God cares about people. God cares about uh, people being saved, delivered, and set free. And in this day and time, the way God operates and the, God, the way God works, uh, nobody has seen God with their own eyes. But the leaders ought to manifest the will of God in, in the lives of the people. In other words, God has given leaders and spiritual leadership, especially the fivefold ministry. 
He's given us great authority and power to be co-laborers with him to, to, to help people uh, to turn from darkness unto the Lord. So it's a great responsibility that leaders have in caring for God's people whom God loves and cares for. The scripture says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if God gave such a great sacrifice, that should tell us how much he loves people. And he wants us to love one another. And, and the scripture is very clear on that. How can I say I love God whom I, I cannot see and, and, and don't love my brother or my sister who I say, see every day? And uh, you, you can't be a hypocrite with that. If you say you love God, you've got to love his people. And your love for the people of God has to motivate you to do what's right at all times. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Now notice. Notice what he says. And notice. He says he's the sheep, they're the sheep of his pasture, saith the Lord. Verse number two. He says, therefore, saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, uh, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. Now, now let's, let's unpack this just a little bit. He's talking about my flock and my sheep and my people, which once again, it reflects a close relationship between God and his people. God has a close relationship between him and his people. God loves his people. And notice, leaders ought to be using their gifts. Leaders ought to be using their gifts not to lord over the people of God, but to build them up, to encourage them to follow God. Let me say that again because that's very important. Leaders ought to be using their gifts, not to lord over the people of God, but to build people up so that they would be free to serve God. And what do you mean be free to serve God? Leaders uh, are responsible for the care and also the correction of those who God has uh, put into their pasture, if you'll allow me to say that, under their leadership or under their covering. And, and uh, leaders then should utilize their anointing. They should utilize the gifts uh, that God has given them, uh, uh, not to lord over the people of God, but to free the people of God to serve the Lord with gladness. And what I mean by free the people of God, uh, utilize the gift. If you see somebody doing something wrong, uh, don't cast them down, but, but uh, confront them, correct them, uh, encourage them, show them the right way so that they can be free from their error so that they can turn and serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness, in the beauty of righteousness. That's the purpose of a leader. If you look at Ephesians, I believe it's Ephesians 4 and 11, it talks about um, uh, the, 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 the purpose of the fivefold ministry for the building up, for the edification, amen? Hallelujah, for the encouragement, Oh, my God, for the strengthening of the saints, uh, for the work of the ministry. And that's what God uh, would have us to do uh, as leaders, to build people up, not tear them down in the sense of uh, keeping your foot on their neck, but to, but to build them up, to encourage them, to show them the error of their way so that they can be free to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness and the beauty of righteousness. God wants us to be, God wants his people to be free. And in order for people to be free, you have to tell them the truth. He, Jesus said, uh, 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 you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. 
So, so you can't uh, 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 put plots and schemes as leaders, put plots and schemes on the people uh, and keep your foot on their neck, use ways and means of manipulation to keep them in your church. Uh, that's not what the Lord wants. The Lord wants uh, people to be fully committed to him. And that fully commitment, that full commitment means that they serve him freely from a willing heart. Uh, so therefore, you've got to lay out both the good and the bad. Hallelujah. You've got to uh, encourage them and strengthen them and correct them. Thank you, Lord, uh, so that they can turn from their wicked ways to bring them out of darkness to light from the serving Satan and to serving God. And that takes that takes leadership. That takes commitment and, 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 and positive uh, working with people until they are transformed by the renewing of their mind that they may prove what is that good and that acceptable and perfect will of God. Now notice, um, these with these leaders, they failed, they failed to do this. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't lead people in the proper way uh, to free them from the errors of their way to serve the true and living God. They held them and kept them in bondage. They used manipulative means uh, to keep their services packed, hallelujah, instead of causing them to be able to be committed unto the Lord. The Lord uh, showed me uh, at an early age when I was raising uh, my children, uh, the Lord touched my mind. He said, uh, raise them to depend on me. Raise them to trust in me. Not trust in you. No, not trust in their daddy, not father, Father Frank, if you allow me to say, like, say it that way. But trust them to lead, grow them up to trust in Father God. Hallelujah. And that's, and that's, the, that's what leaders ought to do. Not cause people to be dependent on them, but to be dependent upon God, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that they're able to ask or think. So as we uh, move further and deeper into the scriptures, we see here, he says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, verse number two, uh, Lord God of Israel against the pastors. He's speaking against the pastors that feed my people. Pastors or leaders ought to feed the people of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And, and I'm going to say this. Um, a, a lot of the reason why Israel got into trouble was because the leadership failed. The leadership failed to correct the people. Uh, the leadership failed to live by righteous examples. And when, 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 when the righteous fall, there is a great fall. There is a, a great chaos. Hallelujah. But, but righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. So, so if you're in any type of leadership uh, position, um, and you may be a kindergarten teacher, you may be an usher, uh, a doorkeeper on the house of the Lord. That's leadership. And uh, you may be singing in the choir. That's leadership. Thank you, Lord. And you have, your lifestyle has to match up with the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Don't be a hypocrite. Uh, Jesus called out hypocrites. My God, don't, don't be a fool. Jesus called out people who lived a lifestyle that, that did not reflect the kingdom of God. You want your lifestyle to reflect his kingdom. And if your lifestyle is not reflecting the kingdom of God, you ought to repent. And I say that with all love and sincerity. Uh, just repent and turn. My God, hallelujah. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Hallelujah, I've, I've lost my way. It's better for you to repent and to turn than for God to lay scenarios in your way uh, to cause you to repent and turn. That's, why, that's what I, I, I believe that scripture means. Uh, uh, Lord, when that, that prayer we call, we call Jesus' prayer, his model prayer, uh, lead us not 
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I believe that that scripture means, uh, Lord, I want to be righteous. I want to be right. And then the Lord uh, gives you an opportunity to be righteous and right. But when we don't take that opportunity to be righteous and right, then the Lord has to ramp up. He has to ramp up uh, some, put some stumbling blocks. Uh, uh, God doesn't lead us into evil. Don't get me wrong when I say that. But he has to put some measures in your life uh, so that you can humble yourself. Amen. We, we've got to be able to humble ourselves and turn and get it right. In other words, it's better to listen to the voice of the Lord than for scenarios to come into your life uh, to cause you to humble yourself and to repent. Uh, that's all I'm saying when I say that. Thank you, Lord, that it's better. It's better. It's far better. I don't want people to get me wrong. Uh, God does not uh, lead people uh, into sin. God does not tempt people with sin. Not, I'm not saying that uh, whatsoever. Uh, but what I am saying is that God, that God, if you don't listen to the voice of God, then you will, uh, uh, he will allow scenarios to come upon you to get you to humble yourself. Amen. And it's better to listen to his voice and react to his voice and humble yourself other than you, other than he allowing scenarios to come for you to humble yourself. So we see here then, uh, uh, notice, the pastors were to feed the people. Uh, he said, ye scatter my flock uh, and driven them away and have not visited them. Uh, behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And that word visit there means, he's saying that you have not cared for them. You have not seen them to care for them and to correct them. Um, God is integral in our lives and he wants his leadership and his people, my God, to be integral in the lives of his people. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor Quinn? I'm saying that, that leaders ought to want to spend time with the sheep. They ought to want to spend time with the people of God. Uh, if you don't love the people of God, you won't do what's necessary to help the people of God. I'm thinking of uh, even uh, Nehemiah. My God, this, my time is almost gone. Uh, I'm thinking of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, uh, he inquired about how the people of God were doing that were released from the captivity. And when he heard and found out that they weren't doing well, he went on a fast. He begins to pray. And then he risked his own life by being in the presence of the king. And the king asked him, what's wrong with you? And he had to tell him. And then, and then the king made provisions and helped him so that he can go back and build that wall and help his people. But my point is, is that he had a heart for the people. He cared for them. People in leadership have to care for the sheep, have to care for the people to want to help them. Hallelujah. So, so the Lord says, you have, uh, 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 I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. So that tells you that they were doing evil. They were doing wrong. You can't do evil, you can't do wrong and get by it. By. The scripture says, uh, because the, the judgment of the Lord is not uh, quickly executed. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. It says that the hearts of men are fully set in them to do evil. People think that if they do evil and do wrong that, and they get away with it, that they've gotten away with it if God doesn't pull down the hammer on them right away. God does not pull down the hammer on people right away. Why? Because he gives them a space to repent. God gives you an opportunity to repent. That reminds me of David. David, when he uh, went and into Bathsheba, and, and conceived a child and then had her husband Uriah murdered 
And God gave David a space to repent. And when David did not repent, God sent Nathan the prophet to David to show him the errors of his ways. And then when David uh, was confronted, see, that's what the prophet, that's what the leader got to do. My God, hallelujah. Uh, it's got to, no matter if it's the king, and no matter if it's the bishop, doesn't matter if it's the pope, hallelujah. Uh, leaders got to confront wickedness and evil. Hallelujah. I commend Nathan. Nathan went in unto David and told David of the error of his way. And notice, David repented. Hallelujah. And God forgave him. But David suffered some consequences uh, from his, uh, his evil actions and his evil deeds. But, 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 but his relationship was restored with God. And that's the purpose of a strong leader. That's the purpose of a good pastor, to help to restore people's relationship with God. That's what I meant when I said pastors ought to build up. Pastors ought to build up the people of God wherein, wherein they can see the error of their way and turn and repent and be reconnected with God. Hallelujah. Not just let go people go in a seem right way, but help them to turn to walk with God. All right, I've got to move on. Notice, he said, I will gather, I will gather, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries, all countries, where, wherever I have driven them. I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. So God is saying that though they're going into captivity, I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to bring out a remnant. I'm going to bring out a remnant. A remnant is a, 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 a group of people that have gone into captivity and God says, I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to regather them. So that gives the children of Israel hope. Uh, even though the God was going to allow them to be dispersed uh, because of their evil ways, but he will not forget about them. Though the hand of the Lord and his chastisement may be upon us at times, but, the, but remember, God has not forgotten about us. He's given us a space to repent. He's given us opportunity to return. No matter what you have done, no matter how far you have strayed, the arm of the Lord is not short. His ears are not dull to be open to your prayer if you cry out to him to repent and to turn. Hallelujah, my God. Oh, I'm getting excited. Hey, hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. My Lord, I'm not encouraging anybody to walk out on God, but I want to encourage those who have walked out on God. Thank you, Lord, to return unto the Lord because he will abundantly pardon. God will abundantly forgive. My God, because it's not his desire, it's not God's will that anybody should perish. Hallelujah. That's the redemptive message. That's the redemptive power. That's the redemptive glory that is in the word of God. Hallelujah. You can bank on that. That's the reason why Jesus went to the cross and died for you and I. So that we can have a right to the tree of life. So that we can be restored, reconnected. Hallelujah unto the Lord. All right. Now notice uh, verse number 11. He says... Um, but verse number three, he says, and in that latter part, and will bring them uh, again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Notice uh, that the language there, that once God restores, God does not hold grudges. Let me say that again. Once God restores, God does not hold grudges. So therefore, once God restores anybody, we as leaders and we as the people of God, we should not hold grudges uh, against people that have gone astray and have reconnected unto God. Hallelujah. My God. When Paul said, uh, told that young man that was uh, sleeping uh, with his uh, stepmama, I hope it was his stepmother. He said it was his mother's 
his father's wife. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping with all my might that it was the stepmother. It's, a, it's better to receive other than uh, uh, the other way around, if you have, if you allow me. Both are wicked, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> There's depths of sin. But anyway, thank you, Lord. But Paul said that he was turning them over for, to the destruction of the flesh. Hallelujah. And then once they turned them over for the destruction of the flesh, he told them, receive him. Hallelujah. Receive him back. Thank you, Lord, as though he has done nothing wrong. And this scripture helps to prove that, that when people have done things against God and against his kingdom, God abundantly pardons. He forgives. And we ought to forgive and abundantly pardon and then help them. Notice, this is help. I will bring them again to their foes and they shall be fruitful and increase. God helps his people. Hey, glory. Hallelujah, my God. And we ought to be in a position to help those in need. Notice then, verse number four. And he said, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, uh, saith the Lord, uh, saith the Lord. Now notice what he's saying. God says, then I'm going to set up new leaders, new leaders that are good, le leaders that are righteous over the people. And they shall feed them. Notice, they shall feed them. Feed them what? The manna from God, the word of God, the moral standard of God. People, leaders need to know what God's moral standard, moral righteousness is. And you do that by studying to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And don't be afraid of people's faces. Say what thus saith the Lord and give them the word of the Lord. Give them the word of the Lord so that they can see, so that they can judge, so that they can make the proper decision. Hallelujah, my God. And feed them and, and, and they shall fear no more. And that word, that fear and be dismayed, be fear um, is the uh, 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 false evidence appearing real. That word dismayed means to lose courage, lose strength because of sudden fear. Um, they were held in bondage and no, uh, no doubt under the whips of those uh, uh, Babylonians and and, and then the Persians came and, and, and people were trying to put their foot on their neck and, and, and living in fear, it has torment. Uh, God does not want his people to live in fear and torment. He wants his people to be of good courage. Uh, the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love and power and of a sound mind. God has given us this. Uh, he doesn't want us to faint in the time of trouble. He doesn't want our courage to be small. He, if you faint in the time of uh, temptation, faint in the time of temptation, your strength is small. And God does not want that for his people. So he says, neither shall they lack, shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. I had an old college professor at Mercyhurst. He says, uh, 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 predictability creates stability. Predictability creates stability. And, and, and God's faithfulness, it will create a, it should create a standard of stability in your life. I'm teaching right now. My God, if you can get that, if you know that God is faithful, if you know that God is stable, it should create some stability in your life. We should not be uh, going here and there, uh, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by every wind of spirit. But we should trust in the Lord, establish ourselves, be rooted and grounded 
in the word of God. So when the storms do come, when the rain does come, you'll be established. You'll be rooted and grounded in truth. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants for his people. God does not want uh, what it looked like. You, you the head of your household and the children wondering every day, is the lights going to be cut off? Is the gas going to be cut off? Is the water going to be cut off? My God, uh, uh, is there going to be food in the refrigerator? No, no. They, they should not be worried about those types of things. Why? Because you are a good caretaker. Hallelujah. And, and that's the same way with God. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost or give good things to them that call upon him? Yeah, hey, hallelujah, my God. And that's stability. Thank you, Lord. And people who grow up in households that have stability in them, and no matter uh, how rich or how poor they are, but if there's some stability, they can be strong. If there's some stability, they can stand still. Hallelujah. And see the salvation of the Lord. All right. So we see here then, this is the bulk and the crux of our lesson. Uh, verse number five, it says, behold, the days come. And that, that word there, behold, the days come. It, it's, <clears throat> it speaks of messianic times. It speaks of the times where there's going to be a manifestation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Saith the Lord. He says, behold. And that means that word behold there, it means take notice because something great is going to happen. Take notice because something powerful is about to happen. He says, behold, saith the Lord, that I will raise up David, a righteous, a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, my God, say, and, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth, my Lord. Uh, notice, notice this, this scripture here is loaded. It's jam-packed, hallelujah, with great information. And remember, I said in the beginning that a branch, it symbolized royal ancestry. It symbolized prosperity. It symbolized the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah. And God had made David a promise that upon his throne, there was going to be established a king forever. And David is the uh, representative of the, the lineage of the, notice he comes from the tribe of Judah, but David uh, was, uh, his lineage can be traced back to Adam. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All the way back. A son of Abraham and Isaac uh, and Jacob, my God, to where whom all the promises were made concerning God's righteousness and God establishing a king forever. And we know that even Mary and Joseph uh, the, the, uh, were of the uh, lineage and the, um, uh, of, 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 of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, the lineage, I'm sorry, the lineage of David, my Lord. He there of the lineage of David. So we see here, um, notice the scriptures. It says, behold, saith the Lord, I will raise up unto David a righteous branch. And that righteous branch, uh, once again, it's a symbol of royalty, ancestry. Thank you, Lord. And it speaks of the Messiah. Notice what it says, and a king, my Lord, a king, uh, one that would rule and reign, uh, and he shall reign and prosper. Uh, notice, and shall execute judgment and justice upon the earth. Now, I want to say that execute judgment and justice upon the earth, uh, that's literally contained in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why the gospel of Jesus Christ has so much power. Because it judges us. It judges us that we were sinners. That, that we were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. And the wages of sin is death. 
And we can't pay for our sins, so God sent a substitutionary who is by the name of Jesus that died on the cross for us. Amen? And notice, he says, judgment and justice. Hallelujah. The judgment of our sins was laid upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And because we believe on him, we can receive justice. And that justice is God's righteousness, the forgiveness of our sins. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. That's the justice and that's the judgment and justice that's held in the gospel of Jesus Christ. For Peter even said, there's no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now notice. Verse number six, he says, in the days of Judah shall, shall be saved. Huh? So, so God is speaking of a future tense here. And Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called. Notice, the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. And that's who he is. He's the Lord our righteousness. And, and in my closing here, thank you, hey, glory, hallelujah. In my closing here, uh, we're talking about a righteous branch, hallelujah. And that righteous branch is Jesus. And Jesus made reference, he said this, he said, uh, uh, ye are the vines, and, and St. John chapter number 15 and, and verse number one. Notice what he said. He said, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Notice verse number two. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse number three. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse number four. Abide in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in me uh, abide in the vine no more can ye uh, except ye abide in me verse 5 this is where we at notice Jesus says I am the vine and ye are the branches now Jesus is the righteous branch hallelujah and he's the vine, and we are also the branches, then we ought to bear forth righteousness. We ought to bring forth the same fruit that Jesus brought forth. We ought to be like him. Notice what he says. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I am him, the same bring forth much fruit, for without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. And the fruit that we bear, we ought to bear the same fruit because we are connected to the same vine. We are connected to the same branch, which is Jesus Christ, the righteous branch of God. Hallelujah, my God. So, so uh, uh, God, ah, glory, God, Hallelujah, in his infinite wisdom and his knowledge, uh, the first part of the scriptures, he's talking about how he's going to bring forth. Hallelujah, he's going to gather his people together. He's going to gather everybody together, thank you, Lord, from the four corners of the world. Here specifically, he's speaking of the children of Israel. And it's going to be more glorious uh, than, than, than how God brung them out of Egypt. And, 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 and made them all to come together and, and, and settle them in the land of Canaan. My God, God is saying that this is going to be when the saints of God get together, hallelujah, with the children of Israel. It's going to be a time. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be more glorious than ever before. Hallelujah, God has something, my friend, for the people of God. Hallelujah. It's uh, the more I delve into the mysteries and the secrets of God, the more it entices me. Hallelujah. To stick around and to hang around because I got to see what the end is going to be. 
I know what the end is going to be for ungodly people and wicked people. Hallelujah. But I've got to see that ah, glory. What's it going to look like for those that uh, lift up the bloodstained banner? Those that hold on to Jesus Christ. My God, those that go through trials and tribulations. Ah, hallelujah. My God, I've got to see him ah, and look upon his face. Hallelujah. I want to be in his presence when the 24 elders are worshiping him. My God, I say often to the saints, I want to cast down my crown. Hallelujah. At his feet. Hey, hallelujah. And worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. My God, we certainly do thank God for this uh, Sunday school lesson on today. Hallelujah. Let us prepare ourselves. Amen. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice. Let us give God a praise. Let us lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Be encouraged, people of God. Hallelujah. He that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. My God. So let us lift up the name of Jesus. Let us be prepared for our 11 o'clock broadcast. Hey, hallelujah. Let the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, let it be with you. Hallelujah. Now and forever. And I want to encourage you to give, hallelujah, to, to make it known that, that, that you believe God and you trust God by giving of your tithes and your offerings. Hallelujah. By mailing them into Christian ministries, uh, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508 or putting them into our job box. Hallelujah, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah, my God. God is a good God. By putting them into our job box, hey, hallelujah, he's the king. Hey, hallelujah, he's gonna reign. He's gonna rule, hallelujah, forever and forever. My God, thank you, Lord. Or going on to our website uh, to Tidely, and giving up your, your offerings. We thank God for you, and may heaven smile upon you. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that the souls here today have received your word, hallelujah, so that we can be built up and encouraged and strengthened in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we magnify you. Hey, glory. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah, we give you glory honor and praise in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord watch hey, between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Hallelujah. My God, I gotta let y'all go. My God, but, but know this. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're gonna have a time. We're gonna have a time when we saints get together, when we be all worship on one accord, we're gonna have a time. Hey, glory, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And we'll talk to you again all at our 11 o'clock broadcast where the Lord has given us a word, my Lord, hallelujah. And we want you to be tuned in and share this broadcast with your family and friends. Thank you, Lord. Share them even with your enemies. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, my God, so that God can be edified and magnified. And as we often say, hallelujah, the devil is defeated, Jesus, God is exalted, and Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you, in Jesus' name, amen.